Good day everyone and welcome to a round table discussion on the topic the future office workplace. My name is Diane Stegmeyer from Stegmeyer Consulting Group and it's a pleasure to kick off this session. Um, my personal goal is to get the thoughts turning here, uh, you know, get a, a couple of statements out there that, that may influence positively or negatively how we think about the workplace. My name is Franz Debison. I work uh, at Ecofon, uh, responsible for the office uh, market. Helen Scheidauer from Munich. I'm working for RBS Group. I'm the head of change and communication management. My name is Rainer Machner from uh, Ecofone in Germany. I'm uh, from a background um, engineer for hearing technology and audiology. My name is Christina Bodin Danison. I'm an architect with a PhD in office design. I work at two workplaces. I work at Stress Research Institute at Stockholm University as a researcher and I also work as a practicing architect specialized on office design. Uh, my name is Henrik Persson. I'm, I'm a futurist from the Copenhagen Institute for Future Studies. And I'm, uh, I'm, I think I'm a, a little bit different here. I'm, uh, I'm not an architect or an engineer. I'm a political scientist from, from the beginning. I'm Karin Elish Maui from um, Kinzo in Berlin. My office works on uh, designing workplaces um, in terms of um, identity. Karin Stål, uh, I'm active within the field of um, change management and tenant representation. What trend will affect the office of tomorrow most? The driving forces behind that and the reason to have an office. Looking back historically, the reason of having an office is to do your job at your station. You have a machine where you did your work. Uh, and now the technology uh, allow us to do our job wherever. Are we flexible enough to, to keep up with these forces that's uh, just uh, rolling on and, and affecting us? What do you think, the human aspects on the changes? Well, well I, I think uh, when, when you talk about that, that I, I come to think about the, the divide between uh, the, the talents and the rest. Uh, and I think that uh, you will see in the future that you have to have different strategies how to manage uh, flexible workers and uh, talents that's more, that work more or less full time. Because if you want to give the flexibility to your workforce and say work wherever and whenever, then automatically you want to downsize your facilities. What do you think about improving health of employees through healing environments? Uh, the tweeter thinks that says that I think healthy offices are the future. You can compensate a missing acoustic with parking spaces for the bicycles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and imagine what that means for the building and for the health and for the noise. Right, and right. Yeah. Uh, this activity-based office type where you can choose workstation on a need basis and you're able to find workstations that suits you within the office and you also can work outside of office. We have green buildings stamped. This is a green building. Mm -hmm. But where is the stamp for this is a good working environment? <laughs> stamp for the person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah the, exactly. The, the, the building might be as green and, and stamped already, but what about us, the persons? To feel happy during your work day or, or in your life in general, uh, is that something that we could build in help, helping with the, with the environments? Do you, do you feel like the, your organization has a direction? Do you do you feel like you know you're making a contribution to things that maybe could could be part of happiness, but doesn't come right out and say, "Are you happy?" The buildings um, are too general, and uh, the, they're not individualized enough. Mm -hmm. So the single the single person feels like an ice cube in a, in a box. My question is. Uh, Thinking about this, we, we are supposed to, to create arenas for cre creativity, functionality and productivity. So whom should we allocate? Whom should contribute? Well, we mentioned human resources and I, I'm a big uh, proponent of that. It should not only be from management point of view, it should be also be the ordinary man on the floor. The younger generations and the, the newcomers, uh, how do they affect? Bring your own behavior is something that I find very critical. 
because um, we, we talked about it earlier, Kareem said that, that an office also needs to be a space um, where I can focus on my work and home is different than a restaurant, than an airport, than an office. We have had patented solutions that this is what the office, the workplace should look like. Uh, could it be that we are now going to invent a new prototype, a one-size-fits-all office, and this is uh, what the, the office world will look like in the future? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, uh, as I said in the beginning, it needs a, a new identity, and the identity is individualized to each corporation, to mm -hmm. each company. I actually have um, found those five. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Let's hear. Do we yeah, need to yeah, share yeah, them? Yeah. Let's, let's, how, let's yeah. get the results. <laughs> yeah. So the results from from the from the jury <laughs> yeah. here in Malmo. Um, actually, the first one, management and culture, of course, how the leadership is shaped and how the managers act uh, in the companies.